Hey guys, it's Aquila and this is the Lefty Knitter Podcast. Today is Sunday, February 9th. And yeah. So we went to a brewery yesterday for a craft pop up uh, that they were hosting there. Um, February is Black History Month, and all of the makers were people of color, and um, not that you should only support people of color during this month because they call it Black History Month, but you should support them all the time, and all makers, you know, of who you choose to support, of course, obviously, but um, we went, we wanted to see uh, the stuff that they showed on Instagram for Union Brewing, which is a brewery here in Baltimore, they were um, showing a bunch of the stuff and it looked really cool and we were like, let's go check this out. So we did and we bought some things and we admired some artwork that we, we didn't purchase any of the artwork. There was an artist there and he was talking with everybody and he was super nice. And this is his button and I can put, I can put links to Instagram accounts all down below for all the makers that um, we bought from and talked about, or I'm going to talk about, I should say. Um, yeah, so uh, the artist was really cool. I showed some pictures of his paintings on my Instagram stories yesterday. And um, yeah, they had a step team perform, a step troop. I'm not quite sure of the correct naming of that if it's a group or a troop or whatever and they had music playing and there was um there was a beer that was crafted um and i should have looked up how to exactly pronounce this but here in baltimore there used to be what they called arabers or arabers i'm not quite sure where you I, I can put the name down below in a wiki link so you can read about it so they were people that went around with and this was, it, it, it's, you don't see them much today. I, you once in a while will see them in the summer or when it's warm. They are people that go around and they have carts full of fruits and vegetables. And they're usually drawn by a horse or a mule or some sort of pack animal. And um, they would sell their fruits and vegetables on the streets in Baltimore. And the name, that was their name, that's what they called them, and I apologize that I don't know the correct pronunciation. Uh, and they crafted a beer, a sour beer, um, called the Hoof and Holler, and it was really good. It had like guava, and was it passion fruit? I can't remember, but um, really, really good. I had two of those. <laughs> they were really tasty. And so they crafted that specifically for this um, pop-up and for the month. Um, so a uh, really nice lady was there. She was selling jewelry and she was selling um, bath bombs and lotions and some other things. I bought a sage stick from her and um, it's wrapped in rose petals, which is apparently for like love when you burn it. Um, the bath bomb, um, Hazel picked and claimed, I think a lot of, uh, she was kind of playing with it in the car. There's a bunch of lavender pieces down in the bottom that were kind of in the top here, but man, if we had smell o vision this thing smells so good. So I know she's going to want to use it today. So, um, that's why I wanted to record this earlier than later. There was, uh, another artist that does, um, acrylic painting. I got his card. We didn't buy anything, but you could check him out. Uh, his stuff was really neat. He had this really large Kobe Bryant painting and this lady purchased it and she was, um, pretty emotional about it when she purchased it. So, uh, another woman I bought this from, and this was really interesting. She had three flavors while we were there, um, because it's seasonal. So, this is like a concentrated drink mixer. So the one I purchased, she was selling smaller bottles and she was selling them as flights so you could get all three flavors for a certain price. 
they were gone by the time I went back. Um, but I wasn't going to get that anyway because I wanted the larger bottle of this flavor because I really enjoyed it. So she's originally from Texas. We talked for a little bit, obviously. Um, she's from Texas and everything that she makes is seasonal. So you get um, these different cocktail mixes. It doesn't have to be like for alcoholic drinks. Now you could make them. Um, she was just mixing them straight up with water for taste testing and you can mix them with seltzer water. You can mix them with uh, practically whatever you want. She was talking about how um, she's been um, telling people to use them as like a marinade. I thought that was a really good idea. Maybe not so much for this flavor, but maybe because it's a citrus flavor. Uh, so you can see it even has some of the herbs and stuff in it. I'll just read what it says. It says, shrubs artisan artisanal drink mixer. Our shrubs are a concentrated version of our ambrosial lemonades. Simply mix with water for a refreshing divine beverage or sparkling water for a scintillating twist. When the mood is right, they make for great cocktails using champagne or other spirits. So she only used very little of this to an eight ounce um, glass. And yeah, really good. This one is lemon juice. It's the citrus thyme flavor. Let me just get that out there. Lemon juice, blood orange juice, pumelo, grapefruit, organic, pure cane sugar, and fresh organic thyme. Now, she just moved here, so she's getting used to the seasonal when everything's ready for uh, usage. So she's excited for um, blueberry and raspberry season to come so she can really um, make those other flavors. So it's kind of... Once these are probably gone and blood oranges aren't readily available because she's buying everything locally, you won't get this until the next season. So I am very excited about this. I'm having a Galentine's get together with my knitting group. So I think I might mix some of this up just um, with water. So in case people want to add alcohol to it, then they can. So I think that's what we'll have. Then there was this... Um, other gentleman there he was sewing he had all these patches laid out on the table and he was sewing them onto hats and beanies and stuff like that and you could purchase that and we previously if you've watched this uh, channel you've seen that John has bought me from Texas I can't think of the person's name die trying I think is the woman she does the chain stitching and he bought me a patch that says Lefty Knitter. Well, chain stitching, I think, is a thing that's like now coming back. It's getting popular again. So he is a graduate of MICA, which is an art school here in Baltimore City. And he has a degree, some sort of degree from there. I'm not exactly sure. But all of his stuff, and I'll link his Instagram name because I cannot, sports something. I can't remember. We, John actually purchased these, um, these patches. I... Uh, there, his Instagram has a lot of really cool ones, but it's all really Baltimore themed, so that makes it even more, like, interesting and cool. Now, he had some other stuff um, that was not. So, uh, if you follow football and the Ravens, this is Lamar Jackson. This is not chain-stitched. This is just felt. Now, I'm not sure how he does those. Um, and then Bethlehem Steel used to be a steel plant here that was like a big money maker and it's now closed and it was a big thing that it shut down and you know people lost their jobs etc so John bought this one and it says Beth it's Bethlehem steel but this says Beth steel and this is this is in the chain stitch and then these other two they're both the same land of the pleasant living which is the slogan for national bohemian beer natty bow so he bought one for me and one for him. So these are really cool. And honestly, he, I can't remember how much John said he paid for these, but they are very good price range. Um, if you look up other chain stitching, especially the dye trying stuff, um, I feel like they're quite, not quite pricey. I mean, it's, but you're paying for the art and the artistry and whatnot, right? So, you know. But in comparison to some of the other chain stitchers that we've seen selling stuff, these were really compared. Do you remember how much these were around? Hmm? Do you remember how much these were around? I mean, these were really a good price. Bucks for four of 
three thirty for four. I mean, that's really a good price. So, yeah. And um, that's everything we purchased there while we were there. And that's about it. I've been working mostly on my Stranger Things cowl, which I put it on two separate needles to try it on over my head. And I feel like it's... A, I feel like it might be too small. And I am not sure what to do if I should rip it back. Because when I first showed you this cowl... Now, I heavily modified it, too. I talked about all the modifications in the last episode. Um, I was only about halfway through the first line of alphabet letters, so halfway through the S, T, U. I was only about there. And I've gotten up to the second stack of letters. And it's just... I feel like if I put a double layer inside of it at this point, it's going to be really tough getting it over over your head. I don't know what to do. I don't want to rip back because I want to kind of go from here but acrylic doesn't really stretch much and I know I'm not going to be able to block it any bigger. I might just go with it and I might have to end up ripping the whole thing out just to see. I feel like I should have added more stitches to that panel that I was saying I made, where this panel, where it's 20 extra. Maybe I should have made 30 extra. <sighs> I don't know. <sighs> I guess we'll find out where this goes. Okay, today is now Wednesday. Sorry, it's not Wednesday. It is Tuesday and it is February 11th. <clears throat> sounding all froggy. I am putting this onto some waste yarn right now. I need to take it off the needles to see if I really hate it or if I don't hate it. I don't know where I'm gonna stand here yet. <clears throat> I finished the whole chart so all I would have to do is either A knit a couple rounds of the background color and bind off, or B, decide to knit the second chart and then make it doubly thick. Don't think I wanna do that. I've also been contemplating that if I do keep it as a single, uh, not a single, if I only do one chart, um, to hide all the floats just because of snagging and stuff, putting it over your head, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> maybe buying a piece of flannel and lining the inside of it. That might be um, an alternative to what I do here. Um, or I might end up ripping the whole thing out. I'm not quite sure where I stand with this yet. Uh, yeah, so as I'm doing this, let me talk about the 11th. So the 11th has always been a special day. I know that seems crazy, like every month the 11th is special. Well, I was born on May 11th, right? So when I was born, my mom decided that every 11th of every month, she was going to take a picture of me. So at my dad's house, there are albums and albums and albums of photos. Um, and pretty much she was very good and consistent about taking one every, every 11th. So even to this day when I remember... <laughs> I'll just snap a shot of myself, like a, you know, selfie, and I'll send it to my mom to keep, you know, the tradition alive. Um, so I think, you know, when, when Z was little, I, you know, you get like the sticker or the little things and you take their picture every, you know, month, one month, two months, three months, whatever. Well, you end up stopping doing that because, you know, you just do. And... I wish I would have carried on like a tradition like this. I think though in this day and age with technology, we forget how lucky we are that we have phones with cameras, that um, taking photographs is um, not even like a second guess. Like. You just take pictures, you know, random, whatever, of food or wherever you are. And 
it used to be like a special thing. Not everybody had a nice camera. You know, I'm 38. I'll be 38. Well, I'm 38. Whatever. Uh, having a camera was a special thing to people. But not everybody could afford cameras. You know, getting pictures developed was not cheap. And so it was a really special thing that my mom did every every month to, you know, preserve those memories. Um, just in general. And, you know, I think we take it for granted that that technology like that is at our fingertips. So I, I really wish I did have a better, I wish I did take more pictures of Z and like every month. It would have been really nice to have that captured. You know, I, I, when she was, before she was born, I had thought, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna journal? Am I gonna try to remember all these things? You know, first words, first steps, etc. you know, and it's really terrible that I, I didn't. I, 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 for a long time, had a, I can't remember the account. It was some sort of, um, you just post pictures. It was, people use it for blogging. And I made it private, and I posted stuff on that for a long time. And then I had set up an email for her, actually. And every once in a while, I would just write down some thoughts to her, and I would email them to her account. So when she's old enough to take over her own email account, um, she'd have all this stuff. So I think I really want to start stepping up my game, even if it's just a quick snapshot on that day of her birth of every month, just take that picture and just email it to her account. Even if I write nothing in the email and I just attach the picture, how cool would that be to be 16 years old and I hand over her password to her and she can go back and see all this. I mean, I know in this, day of technology, she's going to be able to go back on Facebook accounts and Instagram accounts and see pictures of her growing up. I mean, we look at them now, you know, so <clears throat> I just think a lot of people take that kind of thing for granted nowadays. And I don't know, are there are any traditions that your family has that, you know, you'd like to share down below in the comments? I think it's interesting. Sometimes people do some really cool things and I don't know, I just want to hear about it so and I'm sure other people would want to know maybe what you do because maybe people are thinking about a tradition to start with their family like I don't know you know people like mark the walls when they're growing and do all that you know I we never did that I didn't do that with, with Z so I don't know I just thought um it was a really nice thing to have like to go back and look at those of photo albums I have at home my mom was very into taking tons of pictures and we were lucky enough that we could afford a camera and be afford getting pictures developed because it wasn't cheap all right enough rambling about that i now have it on some waste yarn now let's see there we go i wonder if i do put some flannel can i block out that curling a little bit because the top will end up probably curling too I probably will be able to. Okay, so it stretches some. There's a little bit of stretch to that. You can see that it's moving. There you go. Um, I think I should probably try to block it. It can't hurt, right? So here's where I did my extra stitches. Um, let's take this off. This is the that shift cow by Andrew Mowry. Uh, let's just try this on over my head. I'll take my glasses off. Okay, so it is definitely tight. It definitely would be worn more for keeping warm under a jacket and taking off. Like, you wouldn't wear it decoratively. I can't even really see what I'm looking at here. Because, see, it's all scrunched up now that it's on. So, I think putting a second round in it is going to be too much. I think you can kind of tuck it down. Maybe I will just do the single chart. Now I gotta go get some flannel to line this with. I think that's gonna be what I do. I'm gonna put, um, it calls for putting on the Christmas lights, these strands here. 
you put on um, some duplicate stitches of colors to look like Christmas lights. So I think I will end up doing that. And uh, this might be almost done then, other than attempting to block it out. It's like I said, it's Caron Simply Soft. It's acrylic yarn. It's not really gonna block much, but I can try, right? <laughs> I can pin that baby out as much as I can. I don't know how much it would actually hold. Nah, that's okay. I still like it. I, I don't think I'm gonna rip it out. I think for the use of um, it being just a purposeful item, what did I call it? it it's not decorative, it's for use, for, for a perp. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, Stranger Things gal. I think it looks really cool. I hope I can get some of this curling out. We'll see. Okay, it is now Saturday and today is the 15th. I should have known that because yesterday was Valentine's Day. I don't remember those dates. I don't know. John's sitting right here. Well, he's sitting behind. He's sitting where you would be sitting watching me. That's a weird explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Good start, babe. Good start. Okay, so first I'll show you. John got me a Bowie shirt. It's my first Bowie shirt. I've never had a Bowie shirt. That's really terrible. And I got some candy and some shortbread cookies because I love them. They're so good. And he painted me something. Ready? Hot tramp, I love you so. <laughs> I love it. John says he still wants to go back and do a few little touch ups, but I think it's amazing. Make sure you tell him it's my first painting ever. It looks like a kindergartner. It does not look like a kindergartner. Dropped out of oh my art God. class. <laughs> <laughs> Got kicked out of art class. No, I think it looks great. So, other than Valentine's Day happening, we went to the diner. You know, romantic. <laughs> Very romantic. <laughs> we had breakfast for dinner, and that was amazing. And we all had fun until she had a meltdown because she wanted cake. Who is she? Oh, Mrs. E. Wanted <laughs> cake. And that wasn't happening. So, let me just start off. I'll show you the progress I've made on the projects that I have made any sort of progress on. And it's not much because I cast on something new. <laughs> I do the thumbs up way too much. Is that weird? Yeah. Hazel's been doing the peace signs in all her pictures lately, and it's really super cute. I always slip up and say her name, and sometimes I try not to say her name, but I said her name. I think they know her name, if they follow Instagram or anything like that. Oh, I did a giveaway on Instagram. Two people commented. Well, three, including John. <clears throat> So I highly recommend that you go and follow me on Instagram because I do really just random giveaways on Instagram and mostly they're just patterns. Now, I know people like to get bags and they like to get yarn, but shipping all that is harder than just gifting you a pattern. So check out my Instagram, follow my Instagram, they're kind of like sneaky giveaways because I don't right up front say it's a giveaway. Like I posted a picture that Z did in school of like her Valentine's thing and I did it as an early Valentine's giveaway. And it was pick your pattern of your choice for $8. Sometimes I'll give away the pattern that I'm making or something like that. Um, but sometimes it's just I let you pick what you want. So yeah. I did mind off on the cow. I don't think I had bound off yet. I think I was still attached. I did like two more knit rows, a purl row and a knit row, and then I bound off. I have decided I need to go to uh, Joann's, which is like a fabric store. I think they're across the United States. They're everywhere, right? I don't know. And get something to line this with. Do you want to see the floats? Do you want to see the inside? Everybody likes to see the inside, right? It's mesmerizing. I think it's really cool looking. Which way is up and which way is down? I guess it doesn't matter, does it? Well, there's the floats on that section that I added. 
I think it looks cool. I always think it looks really neat. Okay, there's that. I didn't do much to that since I last showed it in the last clip because I had just put it on some spare yarn to see how big it was going to stretch out. I don't think I've made much progress on this at all. This is the Dragon Belly shawl. This is crochet. Um, let's see. I still haven't weighed this to see how much I have left because it's getting kind of wide and I, I'm almost half tempted to modify the pattern. See, that's all I've done from there to there to modify it so it starts getting skinny again. Cause I don't think, I, what am I gonna do with big giant triangle? I'm not quite sure. We'll see, stay tuned to the channel when you find out. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and then of course the cast on. The cast on I did, I had seen Andrea from the Cat Lady podcast. So if you've not checked her out, you should go check her out. I she does a lot of really cool stuff she does knit and crochet she just crocheted these really cute kitty cats and they're super adorable oh no i'm lying that wasn't crochet that was knit maybe she doesn't do a lot of crochet she does the blankets oh that's really terrible i should know like all the people that i watch intimately what <laughs> <laughs> i am in <laughs> let's do it okay so Cat Lady Podcast, Andrea, she cast this on. It was episode 105 if you want to see her finished object. This calls for a worsted weight yarn. That's an F.O. in the business. Yeah. Yeah, no. Dropping knowledge bombs. Dropping knowledge bombs. Okay, the picture that's on their pattern is a little hard to see. It's called, the pattern is The Cooler Side of Warm by Espas Trico. And her name is, I wrote it down, Melissa Ch uh, Clulo? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Okay, hard to see in this, in the pattern. It is a cowl, it is free, it is split at the bottom, the ribbing at the bottom is split, you knit for so long and then you do more ribbing at the top. I should find another project that you can actually see, like a better, like a yarn that's easier to see. Oh, look, here's Andrea's project page. I'll just show you that one. There you go because it was right near the one of the last finished objects on the pattern. So I am using yarn that is in my stash, so this counts for all the podcasters that are doing stash-along, knit-alongs, crochet-alongs, make-alongs. Sorry, I ripped the ball band. Okay, short story. Bonita Yarns is was, I should say, a local yarn shop that was um, like two minutes from my house. It was amazing because it was so close. Lianca and her mom ran the shop. Lianca is a designer. If you, She does a lot of crochet. If you've ever seen like the dragon scales, that's her. I mean, I know a lot of people have probably also made dragon scale looking stuff, but I think she was the one that first started it. I could she be wrong. She was in Vogue knitting. She was in Vogue knitting. So this was her line of yarns that she had made for the shop. And this is um, considered a sport weight. It's called Carbon Blue. It's 333 yards. It's a wool acrylic blend 50-50. It calls for a six or seven. The pattern calls for a seven slash eight. So I'm using a seven slash eight. It's giving more of a drapier fabric and I'm really okay with that. I'm just using my Clover bamboo circulars. <clears throat> Excuse me. I only have one more, since it's a free pattern, I only have one more section to go before the ribbing because you decrease every like three inches, two inches. Well, it changes. The first decrease is like three and a half, then two and then two and then two again, and then you start the ribbing. So there's my split in my hem. And I guess it's kind of considered a hem. It's the bottom of the cowl that kind of sits over your shoulder. And then, yeah. So the yarn does like stripe. I think that looks really cool. It's a single ply. I don't know if you can actually get this yarn. I looked on her website because she does still have a website even though the shop is closed. Um, she didn't have this yarn on the website at all. So she might not have this one manufactured anymore. So yeah, I am really enjoying it. So I cast this on and this is what I've been working the most on. So yeah. Uh, the... Only other things I have to talk about are like things, well, 
one more fiber related thing. I want to thank Hannah from the Cozy Cottage, Cozy Cottage Crochet. I love her podcast. You should totally check her podcast. She's also a designer. She does the Tunisian crochet. And I used to have a Tunisian crochet hook, a straight one. And I want to try Tunisian crochet. It looks so interesting. I've watched videos on it. Wait, you had a hook and you didn't do it? That I doesn't have, seem like you. I know. I have. I do. I, I think I still have a hook. It was, it was gifted to me from somebody's mom's knitting needle crochet stash. Uh, and I've just never used it. It's a straight crochet. I mean, all crochet hooks are straight. I should, that sounds crazy. But Tunisian crochet is different because in regular crochet, you usually only have like one hook, one loop on your hook. But with Tunisian crochet, it's like knitting. So all your loops are on your hook. So if you have a really wide project, Tunisian crochet hooks have like an extension on the end of them. And most of them are the ones that I've seen Hannah use at least are like flexible. Now I do have a Tunisian crochet hook. I'm, I'm assuming it's a Tunisian crochet hook because it's like long. It's really long. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, want to thank Hannah because she gifted me her pattern. She was watching my um, Vlogmas episodes or no, she was watching one of my latest episodes and we were talking about going to Vegas and getting remarried and or renewing our vows, I should say. And she had designed a pattern based on the Mirage and it's beautiful and I want to make it and I have a ton of worsted weight yarn in just box store acrylic yarns and I think I'm going to make some and it's a it's called the Mirage ponytail hat slash cow so it has like a pool tie that has pom-poms on the end and you can tie it to go around a ponytail or you can just tie it to, to make a hat or you can pull it down like a cow and it has the cute little tie pom-poms and I love it uh so yeah thank you Hannah thank you so much uh the only other thing we have been watching we've been watching Jack Ryan and that's been really good it's yes. giving me anxiety though <laughs> watching them it's like military it's about the CIA it's about like capturing like um ISIS and stuff like that it gives me anxiety because the wife of one of the guys was trying to escape and getting her kids out of there and it, it gave me super anxiety. So. Hello. All right, well, I'm gonna go guys. My family's home. It's <laughs> 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 okay. All right, so until next week guys, uh, yeah, knit happy.